Good morning, everyone. He's not looking. <laughs> morning, 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 good morning. Are we on? Good morning, everyone. I'm going to take advantage of the slight lull, sort of, uh, by uh, welcoming us all. You're very welcome to our service here at St. Andrews, our 9.30 morning worship. Lovely to be together here in the name of Jesus to worship him together, to sing his praises, to listen to his word, to pray together. Um, it's brilliant to be back together. Uh, my name's Henry, I'm, I'm one of the, uh, on the staff here, um, and I'll be leading us through the service. Dan, our vicar, um, is back from his holidays, and he's gonna be preaching for us, starting a new series on prayer. Uh, so uh, we're looking forward to very much to that. Um, a big welcome back if you've been away on Easter holidays. We're kind of teetering on the uh, start of term aren't we? Summer term is about to begin. And a particularly warm welcome to the family and friends of Yian Mandeville, who's going to be baptised this morning. Uh, Pete and Emily and Yian are there, ready to go, looking great. Um, thank you for joining us. You are very welcome. Um, just a couple of notices uh, for the church regulars here at St Andrews, members of the church family here. Um, and they should be coming up. And David, if you could have on our screen, there we go, the first women's breakfast this coming Saturday the 20th. Um, the Speaker Hills grew a chance for the women in our church family to gather together, uh, to have fellowship, um, to receive teaching from Hills. Um, if you haven't signed up, it's not too late. Please go to the website. You'll see details there. Also, the second thing is the APCM, the Annual Parochial Church Meeting. Um, that is a chance for all the church family once a year to gather together uh, to reflect on what, is God, what God has been doing in us and through us and amongst us um, and, to and to think about the year ahead. That is Monday the 29th of April um, in a couple of Mondays time. Um, please do put that in your diaries. Come along, join us for that. Um, it's a great chance for us to reflect and to look forward and to be together and to pray together as, as a church. I think that's all to say by way of notices. Um, please can we stand as we begin together. And some words um, for a call to worship will be coming up. We'll say the bold together, I will lead us in the first bits. We are here to worship God, Father, Father Son, and Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. What is God like? The Lord is compassionate. He is deeply moved by our suffering and hears our cry for help. The Lord is gracious. He gives us what we don't deserve, forgiveness and freedom and life because of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is slow to anger. He is patient with us even when we turn our backs on him. The Lord is full of love, a love that goes even unto death. The Lord is faithful. He has promised that he will return to make all things new. Draw near to us as we draw near to you. Some words from a psalm just slightly before that. Those were words from Psalm 103. The start of Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations, before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. And so our prayer is, Lord God, at the start of this new week, this time together, that you would establish us, that you would help us to worship you with our lips and our hearts now, because we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Well, our first two songs this morning remind us that God is with us, and not only is God with us, 
God is for us as well. So uh, Henry is going to come and lead actions. Uh, Henry Saunders was looking slightly concerned at that moment. Uh, Hen Henry Swain was looking even more concerned. <laughs> so here we go. With me, God is with me. With me, with me, God is with me, yes, he's with me every step. With me, God is with me, yes, he's with me every step. And I know God is with me every step I go. With you, with you, God is with you, yes, he's with you every step. With you, God is with you, yes, he's with you every step. And I know God is with you every step you go. Yes, I know. for us. 
Father's love is a strong and mighty fortress. And uh, as we come to celebrate uh, baptism now, uh, we pray, Father, that we would know that great love surrounding each one of us today. And that Yian and his parents and his and godparents would know that strong and mighty love as a firm foundation and a mighty fortress around them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Do please take a seat. Uh, if we haven't met, um, a very warm welcome to you. Uh, I'm Dan, I'm the vicar, and it's my privilege today to baptise Yian. So, uh, Pete and Emily, uh, John, Lydia, Joe, do you want to come on out with Yian? And children, if you're here, this is a great time. If you want to come forward and sit down here at the steps, then you get a really good view of what's going on. Um, and it may be better than where you're seated. So please feel free. You can bring a parent if you want. Feel free, feel free to come down and sit down here towards the front, and you get a really good view. And uh, it may be that you've got one of these, you pick one of these up on your way in. If you haven't, please do so. These are just helpful sheets to help us think about what's going on as we celebrate baptism. Great. So, um, Pete and Emily have been part of our church here now for a couple of years, and um, it's been wonderful to have them as part of the congregation here, and to see little Yian come into the world, and I just thought I'd give you an opportunity just to say a little bit of something about why uh, you're coming here today. Um, so both of us, uh, I think, grew up in the church. We were grew up in Christian families, uh, and uh, we came to church pretty much every week, I think, both of us separately. Uh, I was baptised as a baby, Emily as a, as a teenager. And for us, the community in the church was a hugely important part of our journey of faith. I mean, as a child, I was probably like, Yarn's going to be um, just crawling around under the pews and build, building towers of kneelers. But I think being in the church family has obviously had a huge effect. And... <laughs> And Yarn agrees with that, which is great. Yeah, good. And, and we, we just love Yarn to have that same opportunity uh, just to grow up surrounded by Christians, uh, others who believe, hearing about God and worshipping, and not just growing a faith just in isolation without that. Um, so we want Yarn to grow up in that kind of family and um, to be able to grow and be encouraged in his faith and explore his relationship with, his God, uh, with God. Um, we hope that he might choose to confirm the commitments when he's older um, for himself. And as Pete said to me yesterday, um, he'll probably have a better understanding as a community than just with Pete, me and the dog teaching him. Um, and then we just wanted to say that we've called him Yion because it means God is gracious. Um, it's Welsh, so that's my heritage. And then his middle name, William, is a family name that goes at Pete's side, his dad. And further on. <laughs> Wonderful. God is gracious. Well, that is what we're going to be celebrating uh, now. We're going to be thinking about God's goodness, his grace, his kindness in bringing Yian into the world, but also in making him and all of us here part of his big family. Because he says that if we trust in Jesus we can be part of his big family, loved by him, known by him, and cared for and protected by him. And that's what we're going to be praying for Yian now um, as we go for that. So um, this is baptism, and um, this is uh, what we're going to be doing now is a sign and a seal of forgiveness and of new life in Christ. It's the Easter season, and we remember that Christ is risen, and with him comes new life for all those who trust in him. And we're going to be praying for that new life for Yian. Uh, so we are, as we come to that, parents and godparents and others that are roaming around. Um, today the church receives Yian with joy. Yes, indeed, yes. The church receives Yian with joy. And today we're trusting God for his growth in faith. So parents and godparents, will you pray for him 
Will you draw him by your example into the community of faith and walk with him in the way of Christ? So in baptism, Yian begins his journey of faith. And you speak for him today because he's too small to speak for himself, although he has got a very loud voice. Will you care for him and help him to take his place within the life and the worship of Christ's church? We will. Great. In baptism, God calls us out of the place of darkness, the kingdom of darkness, and into his marvellous light. And to follow Jesus, to follow Christ, means dying to sin and rising to new life in Christ. Therefore, I ask you, do you turn to Christ? I turn to Christ. Do you repent of your sins? Do you renounce evil? I evil? Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? Yeah, you agree as well. Wonderful. Good man. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? I believe and trust in him. And do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God, and makes Christ known in the world. I believe and trust in him. Well, church, this is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Great. Now then, Yian, I have got some oil here, and I'm going to put this oil on your forehead. And I'm going to do it in a very special way. I'm going to do it with the sign of a cross. And I do that because Jesus died for you. And he loves you. Yes. That's right. That's right. So, Yian, Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of his cross. Do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. And we respond, fight valiantly as a disciple of Christ against sin, the world, and the devil, and remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. So, Yian, may Almighty God deliver you from the power of darkness, restore you in the image of his glory, and lead you in the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. Great, well this is the fun bit. Are we ready for some splashing? Are we ready for this? You think so? Yeah, we're ready for some splashing. Now then, up in here I have got some water and oh, it's not too bad, it's quite warm. I think Yian will be alright with this. Have you seen this water as well? Yeah? You can come and see. There we go, that looks fun, doesn't it? Yeah, is that alright? Yeah, head first today. That's the way ahead. It's a new way we're going at St Andrews. That's good. Right, Yian, are you coming with me? Here we go. Good luck. Here we go. Right. So, everyone, this is Yian. This is Yian. And Yian, here is the water, which is going to be great fun. Okay. So, just remind us, what name have you given this child? Yian William. God is gracious. Is that right? I think it is. Right. Yian William, I baptise you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Oh, is that right? Are you a bit wet? Oh, let's, let's just dry you here. He's a little bit wet today, isn't he? Now, a little bit more water than normal. Oh, is that okay? There we go. Right. Here we go. So, everybody, this is Yian William, and we're going to pray for him now. So, loving Father, we thank you so much for Yian William. God is gracious, and we pray that you would be gracious to him, you'd be good to him. We thank you so much for this new life, a new life that has come into this family, and we pray for him for his parents and his godparents, for all those who love and care for him. And we ask that together, 
uh, they may be given all they need to help him grow in the knowledge and the power and the Spirit of God. We pray for your anointing on this young man, Yael. We pray that by your Spirit, you would strengthen him to love the Lord Jesus with all his heart and mind and soul and strength, and that he would love his neighbour as himself. We pray that in due time, he will come to know you and to trust you and to love you with all that he is. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yian, you are scrummy. <laughs> Brilliant. Right. Wonderful. So Yian, may God, who has received you by baptism into his church, pour upon you the riches of his grace. May he watch over your life from this day forward. May he bless you with revelation and understanding of the word of life, which is his holy gospel, that you may come to that time when you confess for yourself the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Great. Wonderful. Well, church, there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And yearn by one spirit, we are all baptised into one body, which makes us all brothers and sisters here. And so, church, we say together, we welcome you into the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same Heavenly Father. We welcome you. Brilliant. Should we give Yarn a clap? <laughs> Wonderful. Here he is. So, I don't know what you guys are doing for the rest of the service, but me and Yian are just going to hang out for a bit, <laughs> and um, we're going to enjoy ourselves. And, uh, uh, but, at this point in the service, this is a... Oh. At this point in the service, this is a great time for our children and our young people to go to their groups. So, just before you go, information's up on the board if you're a new parent here, uh, or you're a carer here. But before you go, let me just pray for you. So, Father, thank you that we are all children of the same Heavenly Father. And we pray for our children and our young people in their groups now, that they would grow to know the Lord Jesus more and more. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, may God bless you as you go. I think... Well, please do carry on those conversations afterwards over in the hall uh, where there's coffee and tea available. Um, we're going to continue our worship now. So can I invite you to stand uh, as we sing together, God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed.
know just what to do. God, I look to you. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like we do. God, I look to you. You're where my health comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do. And I will love you, Lord, my strength. I will love you, Lord, my shield. I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love you, Lord. And say that we do love you. Our shield, our strength, and our rock. We want to say that forever and for all our days we will love you. And uh, yet even as we pray that and we do believe it and we want it, Lord, we know that uh, as we cast our minds back on the last week, the last few hours even, uh, there are things we need to confess and so we want to do that now. Some words coming up, we can say together. We'll say together. Lord, we have sinned. We have turned away from you and disobeyed you. We lift up our voice to you and cry for your mercy. There is no one else to whom we can go. Please save us from our sins and from the temptations that seem too strong for us. Please forgive us as you have promised through Jesus' death on the cross and help us to praise you as we should through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear a wonderful verse from Psalm 90. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. And so, Lord God, we want to pray, even as we confess, we want to pray with thanks that you are a God of unfailing love. And as we turn back to you, having confessed, we come to you in repentance, we come to you in love, because you have first loved us. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Please have a seat. And we are, at this point, going to turn to the reading and preaching of the Word of God. Um, Sev is going to come and read Dan 
will come then and preach. Thanks, Seth. Hi, um, the reading today is Luke chapter 5, verses 27 to 32. It's on page 1033 in the Church Bibles. Um, it's the calling of Levi. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him. And Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. Then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with them. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law who belonged to their seat complained to his disciples, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus answered them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. This is the word of the Lord. Great, thanks, Sev. And um, just before we begin, I, um, you may have noticed if you've been here for a few years, but one of the godparents that stood up was um, was John Holder, and um, and I didn't make a big thing of it in. Uh, in, that, in, the, in the baptism, but I think it is worthwhile us just noting that John is here and to say thank you, John, because John was one of the pioneers in Cutslow, uh, was the, the sort of youth minister, I can't remember exactly what your title was, something like that, youth minister in Cutslow for a number of years and did, um, has, did a wonderful job. And we often give thanks for what God is doing in Cutslow for seeing the church there grow, seeing connections made in the community. And I just want to just take a moment just to say, John, thank you for your ministry, uh, for your love of those people, for your hard work in doing that. And uh, yeah, thank you for laying those foundations that we are benefiting from today. So may the Lord bless you. Thanks. Great. Well, um, today we start a new sermon series on, uh, on prayer. And uh, here's a quote from um, John Calvin. Uh, next slide. Words fail to explain how necessary prayer is and in how many ways the exercise of prayer is profitable. Words fail to explain. And yet, that's my task today. To explain why we should pray. To explain how necessary prayer is. If Calvin said that words can't do it, then what I say matters less than what God does through these words and in our hearts. And so we need to pray. We need to pray, Holy Spirit, come. So let's do that now. Holy Spirit, please, where words fail, would you work in our hearts? Would you come and teach us to pray? Would you help us to see the necessity of prayer? And would you teach us to be a praying church? One that with our whole heart and mind and soul and strength loves you. And knows you as our Father. Our good Father who hears the cries of our hearts. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, yes, we start a sermon series on prayer. And in the coming weeks, we're going to be looking at how to pray, at uh, what to pray, at different aspects of prayer. And then we come, um, we'll come together with the global church, praying Thy Kingdom Come, which is a, a global church initiative in the week before Pentecost Sunday. So mark it in your diaries now, the 13th to the 19th of May. It's going to be a week of prayer here in the church. Lots of stuff going on. Please do uh, come and join that. But today I'm asking a really simple question, and yet a profound one. Why pray? Why should you pray? Well, there are multiple reasons for that. Some would say prayer is wishful thinking. 
others a desire to believe in a non-existent higher power, others because mindfulness is good for you, others because we think we can control our destiny when life is just a bit random, or maybe it's a crutch to get through life. I wonder what your take on prayer is. I want to suggest that we pray because we're made for relationship. We're made to be needy. We're created to pray. Just a few verses before our passage in Luke 5. Uh, if you want to look at it, it's on page 1033 in the, in the church Bibles. Uh, just a few verses before our passage in verse 16, previous page, we see that the practice of Jesus was always to be in prayer. Verse 16, but Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. It's a key part of his ministry, his time to see from his father's perspective, to commune with him, to seek his purpose and his will. And yet now when we come to our passage, it's not Jesus withdrawn and in a lonely place. No, it is Jesus in the thick of the action, people around him everywhere. A calling of a disciple to follow me, to do the things that I do. Yes, even to pray. And so like Levi, we are invited to follow Jesus and we're invited to pray like Jesus. As we start this sermon series, I believe that we will never learn to pray unless firstly we see our need. And this passage today focuses on our neediness. Now, in our culture, none of us wants to be needy. If you're needy today, it's a disgrace. It's suboptimal. It points to a failure to be able to do things on your own. Who wants their story to be, well, I gave, a, I gave my business a go, but my business venture failed, and I now need to borrow money from my parents or my family to survive. <coughs> no one wants that story. Well, what about this one? Actually, we tried, but our marriage is falling apart, and we need to get help to get through. I mean, nobody really wants that story. These are the story, stories of many lives, and if you need help, if that's you in one of those situations, please reach out. Please say something. Please do get help. But my point is this, we don't want them to be our story. We don't set out hoping that's going to be our story. And today I want to see neediness in a whole new light. In this series on prayer, I hope that we see that any situation that reminds us that we're desperately needy is actually a good situation. That doesn't mean that it's not hard. That doesn't mean that it's not painful. But it does mean that it can help us. God's word teaches us that being needy is not a disgrace but it's a reality to be embraced. I want us all to leave here this morning recognizing that we're needy, not just on a global scale as things escalate in the Middle East, but on a personal level. And to see that, that truth as a good thing. Because we're made to be needy. Yayan was baptized this morning because he's needy. Because he needs the cleansing of God's spirit. Because he needs to take that same journey that Jesus took from life to death to life again. Because he needs to know the power of the spirit in his life. Because he needs to hear the loving words of the father spoken over him. This is my son whom I love. And we all need that. We pray because we're needy. St. Augustine famously prayed, Almighty God, you've made us for yourself and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. And if that's true, if our lives can't be fulfilled uh, outside of a relationship with the beauty and the mystery of God, then prayer becomes not a religious bolt-on to a pretty good life, 
but an essential ingredient in being fully human. Let's turn to Luke 5, page 1033. And as we do, you will see three ideas in this passage, all of which with the connect with this idea of being needy, and thus our need to pray. Firstly, embracing my neediness opens my heart to God. Verses 31 and 32 convey the main point of the story. It's there on the screen. This is the blade that Luke is hoping will pierce the reader's hearts because here Jesus is correcting the perspective of his critics. There's a party and the party guests have been separated into two camps, the holy and the unholy, the clean and the unclean. That's why they're surprised that Jesus, supposedly holy, is aligning himself with the unholy. But Jesus wants to see that although there are two camps of people, they're not the holy and the unholy. That's not the right separation. No, there's the doctor and the sick. That's it. And how sick are these people? Well, they're very sick. And they need the doctor. Jesus answered them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I've not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. In Levi's home that day, there were spiritually sick people in need of a divine doctor's care. There were sinners in need of God's grace. It was a party of needy people. Today, we too, even Ewan, Ewan, sorry, would be in the spiritually sick category, the needy category. And I think that the host that day understood that. If Levi didn't see himself as a needy person, he'd never have followed Jesus in the first place. He left everything, all those things that once gave him comfort, to follow Jesus. Yet to the people of the day, he wouldn't have been considered poor and needy. The poor and needy were all over Israel at the time. The whole Old Testament tells us about the the poor and needy and God's concern for them. But that wasn't Levi. He had means. Ill-gotten maybe, but he had resources. And yet he'd come to understand what David talks about in the Psalms, that he was poor and needy. Just look through the Psalms and you'll see that refrain again and again and again. As for me, I am poor and needy. That's not a statement about his socioeconomic position, but about his situational and spiritual desperation. He uses economic language to describe his desperate situation. And we do the same, don't we, when we say they're morally bankrupt. Jesus did it when he said, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Paul did it when he said to the church in Corinth, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. You see, in an incomparable way, the poverty of Jesus, that's his suffering, has brought eternal wealth to our spiritual poverty. And in Revelation, Jesus, through John, speaks to the Laodicean church about how material wealth was blinding them to their spiritual condition. For you say, I am rich. I've prospered and I need nothing. Not realizing that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind and naked. Is that you? Is that me? What Jesus says in Revelation and Luke 5 is that sin sickens our souls by deceiving us about our neediness. We just don't think we need anything. We can't move forward spiritually unless we, like Levi, acknowledge that we're sick and poor and needy. That's the repentance that Jesus calls us to in verse 32. 32, And it's the first step in prayer. That's what Emily and Pete have done in, tr- in trust today for Yian. They've declared that he is poor and needy, that he needs a saviour, and in trust they've put him in the care of that saviour. 
And when we repent, our hearts are open and ready to receive what we need. A saviour who now prays, intercedes for us. So why pray? Well, because I need a saviour. Not just when I first came to follow Jesus, but every day I need a saviour. Embracing my neediness opens my heart to God. Secondly, embracing my neediness brings me to Jesus' table. You see, the, the bad news then is that we're sick. But the good news is that God has provided a physician. Now, now I don't know what your experience is like with doctors. In a congregation like this, I know that some of you will be married to them uh, or, uh, or will know doctors very well. But most of us have a right, distant, clinical relationship with our doctor. So do you see the difference here in this passage? This doctor, this physician, goes to a great feast with us. He gathers people around him and he feasts. He reclines and he eats with soul-sick people like us. It's astonishing. Levi knew that Jesus was exactly what a needy man like him needed. And yet sin makes us blind to our true needs. Sin's deception and our neediness are closely connected. You see, sin itself doesn't make us needy. As finite creatures created in God's image, we're inherently needed, needy. Being needy is precisely what we are designed to be. We were made to need God. But sin is a distortion of that truth. It redefines our needs. It makes us think we can overcome our needs ourselves. And Jesus meets our greatest need by directing and connecting our neediness to God. When Jesus takes our sin on the cross, he doesn't just take away our neediness. He doesn't do that. He met our need for forgiveness. But he restored us to a relationship with God in which our needs could and should be met. Through the cross, we're adopted into God's family. So like Jesus, we can call God Father, Daddy, intimately. Prayer is coming in our neediness to a loving Father, recognizing his providence as he watches over us and guards us. His power as he sustains us in our weakness. His goodness as he receives us by grace into his presence. Prayer is a foretaste of the heavenly life that I will have at the great eternal banquet with Jesus. Embracing my neediness brings me into the presence of God. To the very table of Jesus who sits around with needy people like you and I. Even as it opens my heart to the purposes of God in my life and the world. And then thirdly, embracing my neediness is a real daily struggle. Why do I struggle to pray? Well, often it's because I don't see my needs. Embracing my neediness is a real and regular struggle. Levi's house was a kind of a microcosm of the world. And in the world, there is only the great physician and those in need. The Pharisees and the scribes that are mentioned here are not in some third category of people who kind of see, uh, who, who see how good Jesus uh, could be, who, who somehow work in their own power to a goodness and a rightness with God. You see, the only difference between the Pharisees and the other guests was this. The Pharisees and the scribes didn't see themselves as needy. For the religious elite, their ultimate need was to keep God's law, to be righteous before him. They believed that through diligence they could do that. They would agree with us, perhaps, that we were made to need God. 
But that, that for them, that need was met through observing the law of Moses and the traditions. But in Jesus' ministry, he wanted those religious leaders to accept and embrace the fact that they were far sicker than they were willing to admit. You see, the law was a good thing, but God wasn't using it as a ladder to get to him, but as a thermometer so that people would know and recognize just how sick they are. If they would embrace their true neediness, they would embrace Jesus and others to whom he came. And we also struggle to embrace our neediness. We want to be associated with people who have it all together, not the person that needs help. We want to look stable, not admit that our hearts are prone to wander. But God, God embraces us as we embrace our neediness. Through Jesus, God is calling you to repentance. And that means admitting that we've deceived ourselves about our neediness, that we sought to meet our needs in the wrong ways, in the wrong places, with the wrong people. Repentance means we admit we've wrongly believed that we're strong when we're weak. That we're right when we're wrong. That we're good when we're evil. That we're well when we're sick. And we do that through prayer, through an ongoing discourse with our Father in heaven. Martin Luther spoke about this reality. He said this, but where there is to be a true prayer, there must be earnestness. Men, and we'll take that to mean women as well, must feel their distress. And such distress as presses them and compels them to call and cry out. For we all have enough that we lack. But the great want is that we do not feel nor see it. Do you feel or see your lack? If our lives are built on striving to be comfortable by any means possible, we'll not feel or see our true neediness. We have to embrace discomfort. It can give us eyes to see the truth. God's word teaches us that being needy is not a disgrace, but a reality to be embraced. What is it going to take for you today to say to God, I am needy? I'm going to suggest it's going to take two things, courage and comfort. Courage to admit that we are desperately needy is tied to the comfort that God can and will meet our needs. And all of that is a gift of God's grace. Levi didn't earn an invitation uh, to, to be Christ's disciple. No, he was in his tax booth. Minding his own business when Jesus broke in. And that is the heart of the gospel. And it's our hope today. Pray that God would break in. Pray that God would help you to see your neediness. And how he can meet those needs in Jesus. We pray because we're needy. And because, and here's the comfort. Whatever we need... Whatever we lack is in God and in Christ. It remains for us to seek him and to turn to him in prayer. It may be that you are plagued with the fear of an unlived life, a scattered existence of secondary things. You know, we've become amazingly proficient in all the new things, new technologies, new ideas, and yet the human heart is in danger of shrinking or not coping with the waves of change that pour over us. We know deep down that we need something substantial to meet our need. Maybe, just maybe, it is the living God that we, that we need after all. The breathtaking beauty of the Creator. The response 
to that longing that we sense when we slow down just enough to allow God to speak. And the story of Levi invites us to have the courage to pray and to follow Jesus, to embrace our neediness, to open our heart to God, to come into his presence, to banquet with him, and to acknowledge that real daily struggle to receive the comfort that it is all his anyway. And as we do so, we might find the help we need to pray. The connection with the Spirit that makes prayer exhilarating and stretching and healing. Peace for our souls. And an invitation to pray with humour and anger and joy beyond imagining. Jesus says, come, follow me. Would you do that today? Would you open your heart to your neediness and follow him? Let's pray. Loving Father, we, we recognize our neediness. Just with Yian cry, with crying, those little cries that come out, we recognize that we too are like babes in your arms, unable to really form what is on, uh, in words what is in our hearts. And yet you hear our cry. And so we come to you in repentance and we come to you in faith. Give us the courage to allow more of you in our lives and help us to know the comfort that we are in your hands. Come, Lord Jesus. Help us to follow, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's stand, shall we, as we sing.
to a time of prayer so let's sit or kneel in the light of what we have just heard embracing our neediness so Lord God we do want to echo these words and these exhortations in our hearts we thank you for these wonderful incentives that we've thought about in this moment with Levi. And as we pray, we want to commit to you our needy world. We look at headlines from Sydney and these horrible knife attacks. The conflict between Iran and Israel just overnight. The headlines this week of Hamas leadership being killed in the war in Gaza. Our world is one which needs your help, Lord God, and we want to commit these things to you, as well as the many other things that fill our hearts with sadness. And we pray, come Lord Jesus, and we ask for restraint and for grace and for wisdom for all leaders and decision makers in these things. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Close to home, Lord, we are in an election year here in the UK, as with many other parts of the world. And we pray that as politicians and decision makers and leaders campaign and think and make manifestos that you would guide them with your spirit of truth and wisdom and love. Please would they see their need of you ultimately. And please would Christian people in positions of influence help them, guide them to your wisdom and your truth. Please as laws are made in this land would your people and all people be given the space to live with peaceful, peaceful lives of security. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. For our church, Lord, and for the, your church all over the world, in this post-Easter season, as we think about the resurrection truths, as we think about what it is that, that Jesus has risen from the dead to defeat death and sin. 
We ask for your church, please, to live with that freedom, that freedom to be needy, that freedom to rely on you in all things. And we pray that as your people do that, they would be beacons and lights to their needy world, their needy neighbours around them. And close to home for this church family here at St Andrew's, Lord, we pray at the restart of term, with much ahead, with some rest behind for some, we pray that as things restart, you would strengthen our resolve to depend on you in all things each day. We pray particularly for Sunday school groups starting today and this evening, that you would fill the rotors, and more than that, Lord, that you would work in and through these groups, teach the children in this church family what it is to love you, to depend on you, to follow you all of their days as we pray that for, for Yian. We commit to you those known to us who are suffering in our church family. And we ask for your spirit of peace and comfort and healing and strength, for good medical care, for prayerful, dependent hearts which find comfort in you. We ask all these things in the precious name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our final song is a great hymn of trust and triumph in the Christ who rose from the grave and who died and for whom we can follow. We're going to stand to sing in Christ alone. Let's stand. Let's go. 
Thank you so much for joining us. Great to be with you together, with us all together, and particularly welcoming the family of Yayan. And uh, please don't um, rush off if you don't need to. Um, the coffee will be served next door, just through those double doors. Please stick around. Let's continue our fellowship together, encouraging each other in these truths as we move forward into another week. Um, if you would like to pray with someone, uh, or you'd like prayer for yourself, or you'd like to pray for someone else, uh, there is a prayer ministry team who meets here just afterwards. Please make the most of that. It's an opportunity to share what's on your heart, um, perhaps as you move forward into this week, into a, into a new term. A final verse and prayer as we finish. Jesus answered them, It's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And so, Lord Jesus, that first step that we all know we need to embrace our neediness, we turn again to you and ask for your help this week to live in the light of your glory, in the light of your all-sufficient grace as needy people. And as we go, we thank you and we pray this. Now, the God who hears your cries and listens to your prayers, be the shelter above you, the tower around you, the rock beneath you this day, and all the days until Jesus comes. Amen. <laughs>